this is my dream, you know. I want to represent Tibetan people in the international level. Because in, in my athlete people, they don't know who's Tibetan. Yeah. I don't I don't want politics. Okay. And I don't want like a seated in here, you know. I don't want to sit. Okay. I want to walk for my young Tibetan people and Aisha Ma'am and Kishu Ma'am, you know, which is a very strong lady, you know, which is, who, who's uh, doing all this. And I can call them, you know, there's a, our fighter mother Teresa's born. I feel like also suicide, suicide I am all these things, you know. And then later I realized my friend took me in the hospital and all these things. And they said, like, your life is very special, you know, you've been through so many things. I sell my jewelries, you know, because I don't have any financial support. And Prime Minister uh, Pembasirin La, please help us to make one academy, which is I will I will love to run and under the CTA, so we can make more Tibetan uh, warriors. Unsilenced Voices of Young Tibetans is a podcast presented by the Foundation for Nonviolent Alternatives, where young Tibetans share their personal stories, experiences opinions and journey in exile. Uh, Dashtale, Namaste and welcome to FNVS podcast channel Unsilenced Voices of Young Tibetans. In today's episode, we have with us the first Tibetan women's mixed martial artist who recently brought Tibet to the fore through her fight at the MFN 14 in Noida, which was live streamed in one of India's largest streaming platform, Disney Hotstar, garnering nearly half a million views. Her fight drew thousands of Tibetans, all of whom were waving the Tibetan national flag in support of her. Her story from a young Tibetan girl to a woman who represents the Tibetan people is of grit, determination and hard work. Welcome to the show, Kinsi Pramala. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting me and thank you so much for giving me opportunity to speak to my story in here. Thank you. Uh, the pleasure is all ours, Pramala. And one thing that all of us uh, would like to know is who is Tenzin Pema as a person and what impacted you most when you were growing up? Uh, Tenzin Pema, she's uh, born in Protap, uh, West Bengal, Sikkim. And I born in West Bengal, part of like a Kalimpong. Mm -hmm. And after that, I my schooling for Sikkim Government High School. And I've been through so many things in there. And I did hard work, working people are around home. And she's a very, uh, she have a very huge dream to uh, uh, giving a recognition to my Tibetan people mm -hmm. and also my Indian uh, young uh, generation of girls and boys and all those things. Yep, and one thing that you really brought into light is how, you know, the Pema, I mean, in Pema basically is lotus. Yes. So the lotus flower also, it sort of grows among the adversaries, like traditionally or technically speaking, like it grows amidst all the murkiness. But when it blossoms, it's like stands out. So I think your name and what you have achieved right now just symbolizes this. But moving along what you're currently doing, being a Tibetan uh, MMA, mixed martial arts, is something which is not mainstream, which you are like likely aware of. And what was the thing that prompted you to pursue it? Actually, when I was very young, uh, like uh, in the hostel, I was just watching the TV, you know, and that time the Muhammad Ali, he's a very famous oh. boxer, you know, and I was just watching his uh, boxing and all these things. And first time I thought like he's just doing some drama and all mm. these things, right? And slowly, slowly I realized, oh, this is real game and this is... If you want to do something for in your life or your country to recognize more people, you know, so it's a great opportunity, you know. I thought that things, you know, and I very inspired with Muhammad Ali, and then I decided to one day I will be become a, like a boxer and all those things, but not a boxer, but I'm like a, now is I'm I'm a pro professional fighter, which is I represent India at the whole level many time, and still going on. Yep, indeed, Pamela, and. Uh, when it comes to MMA and other combat sports, the thing that is very much required is the physical uh, proudness, the physical stamina, the physical training that one has to undergo. So if I'm able to ask, like, how many hours per day do you train yourself to excel in this very competitive sports? Yeah, that's really good question. Uh, as an athlete, you know, we have to be uh, understand our body, what we need and what we don't need it, you know, and especially... 
uh, smoking is not good for them you know and i'm a very lucky person you know i've uh, i'm a, like a himalayan girl you know so by birth i have a very good stamina you know and uh, and the training timing and all those things you know we have like a if if we are doing if we have a fight and uh, training camp and if you have a training camp and uh, we need to we do training like three times in day but it's very really hard you know a morning like a two hours which is they have a mix of wrestling judo ground game kickboxing muay thai everything is mixed you know you have to whistle from a distance or two hours in morning right and then afternoon also two hours same thing same happen same hairs same again yeah, you know like repetitive yes, each yes, day yes yes each day is the same thing each day is the same thing i think it's a uh, it's also uh, about the patience okay you know and uh, which is make us a uh, good player and uh, stronger and good stamina conditioning you know all those things you know yeah indeed prema and uh, on that note like you said you mentioned a lot of uh, combative sport be it muay thai even jiu jitsu like yes is there anything which sort of uh pushes you or is there anything among this which you specialize and which you look forward to in com- in terms of training uh actually i love uh striking i love striking and uh, my first game is also striking and i'm very comfortable with the striking but unfortunately my coaches also they advise me that as a mma you mm-hmm. need everything you know like a wrestling jiu jitsu Muay Thai and everything you know you need to be learn to mix and after that all combos and you are the MMA player right so i i like uh, striking that indeed man i think that was very much evident in your fight but before we go along that like i would like to ask you what was your first competition that you took part in what were your memories of it <laughs> yeah that's a good question i always think like uh, somebody can ask me that question you know i was waiting for that but thank you for giving me opportunity yeah my first uh, competition is was so funny and uh, uh, it's is in delhi okay. and 2000 i think 2015 yeah 16 and i don't remember exact timing in that and i joined the some academy uh, when i got me in the lajpat nagar and i joined there and i trained there only one month and i don't have so much experience but i have a like a, you know i want to fight i want to fight you know like a excitement you know excitement and i said to my coach you know i want to fight and he said okay fine i'll put you in mma mm-hmm. mma and i never play anything in the sport but i i said like i want to fight mm-hmm. and he said okay okay you can fight and he uh, put me in the mma pro level which is i don't know even i didn't play uh, amateur games and he put me in the directly in the pro level and the very uh, experienced player and she's taller than me she's uh, like a weight everything is uh, bigger than me you know and still i fight with her and that time is just making me so funny because i don't know how to punch and all these things it looks like a cat fighting you know <laughs> and uh, that things makes me very crazy and uh, that memories give me to you know to refresh my mind to you need to be more learn techniques and mm-hmm. you have to be improve those things you know you can't be do like a donkey like a stupid things here okay you would learn one month and you want to fight you know and at that time i realized this is a serious matter and you, i need to be focus more training sessions yeah and from that Pema, like when she would just started out her MMA career to the current Pema, where you know recently, as mentioned in our introduction, you took part in MFN 14. Like I was also privileged to be there to witness your exploits during the event. But what drew me was the lot of Tibetans. You know, they came out in huge numbers, and I personally felt even what some of your interviews after the fight, like you gave to RFA Radio Free Asia. Yes. So you really said things that really touched the Tibetan. and like taking this opportunity what was the difference from that first competition that you took part in and the most recent one yeah uh first time that i took that uh, competition you know just because for me you know i want to explore i want to be uh, like a uh, release my frustrations about my childhood bad things you know mm-hmm. and many things which happen in my life 
which is very like uh, unexpected right. and then after that and, and I realized this is a really great platform if I use uh, sincerely so uh, one day I can uh, give to chance to another sports uh, young generations to introduce you know and now this this uh, MFN uh, gave me a chance to in also 2022, uh, they gave me a chance also the MFN season nine, which is that time I was uh, it's like a pandemic also yeah. that time right it's so crazy things and I don't get any good training and I was very sick in that time, and that that is my first debut in MFN, and unfortunately I lost that because uh, some my mistakes. And now again, they gave me a chance for after three years. Within in three years, I have been through many things. Uh, first things I like to reveal: uh, ex MFN uh, the workers, uh, Alan Fernandez. Mm -hmm. He he just destroyed my life mm -hmm. to MFN, and he said to MFN, um, Aisha ma'am. And Tenzin, she don't want to play anymore in MFN because she lost MFN season 9, right? And she said she don't want to play again. I never said all those mm -hmm. things. And he destroyed my life and uh, he destroyed my everything, you know. Now opportunity is gone and um, I'm over. Mm -hmm. Maybe my time is finished. I thought like that. I feel like also suicide, suicide I time, all these things, you know. And then later I realized my friend took me in the hospital and all those things. And they said, like, your life is very special, you know, you've been through so many things. And I said, yeah. And then later I realized, you know, you said, they said to me, you know, you have to be speak to Madam, you know, MFN and all those things, you want to play and all those things. Because three years I didn't play anything, you know, because mm -hmm. I was very honest with the uh, MFN. I was waiting for a fight and, uh, and unfortunately my manager, I don't know who's right and who's wrong, who's this politics, who's this not politics, I don't know and uh, I don't have any proofs. Mm -hmm. But in my manager, he don't know what's happened with my career in MFN, right? And I just said to my manager, uh, you, you don't need to be uh, work with yeah. me anymore because I don't want. Thank you for everything. And I speak with Aisha ma'am. Directly? Yeah, directly. And the uh, Instagram. And very lucky. And mm -hmm. she quickly responds in Instagram. And she said, uh, okay, you can just uh, message me in the WhatsApp. And she sent me in the WhatsApp number. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you have to be been through many yeah. official things, you know, mail and all those things. And I speak with her. I want to fight and, you know, I want to be, again, give me some chance. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, you know, Alan sir said, you don't want to fight, you know, you're over and all this. I said, ma'am, I never said all these mm -hmm. things, you know. And unfortunately, and she said, oh, wow, really? And she said, like, okay, um, I, I didn't know that things, you know. Mm -hmm. And he said all this thing because uh, MFM throw out him, you know. Mm -hmm. He did all some corruption and all this things, mm -hmm. which is uh, their own official work. Uh, this is not my business. And... Later, and uh, Aisha ma'am, she said, okay, we'll uh, make some fight for you. And they gave me many times, uh, like uh, three, uh, two opportunity mm -hmm. in the during the, uh, I've been for season 13, you know, I was very sure, my manager said, uh, you will be playing in uh, MFN 13. And I was very sure. And I've been to uh, Thailand for training for three months and training camp. And I know how I go there, you know. I sell my jewelries, you know, because I don't have any financial support and nobody is giving me any support and all those things. I work and I earn, right? So at that time I have uh, some like uh, gold jewelry and all those things. I sell all those things. And I've been in Thailand for season 13, you know. And then later I came back in India, then I know all those things. Uh, you are not playing anymore. And she said, he said like, blah, 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 the politics things, mm -hmm. you know, and destroy things. And I said, ma'am, uh, I want to fight because that's why I've been there, Thailand and all these things. I invest my whole life, my money, uh, saving accounts, you know. Now I'm like a totally bankrupt. So you have to be do for something for me. And she said, okay, fine. We'll make you fight for season 14. And she gave me a promise and she fulfilled. It makes me very... I think... Um, Nobody has to write to destroy anyone's life, you know. Karma is always there. 
That's why he did bad for me. He did for many people. I don't know. Maybe. So he's uh, paying back in karma and he throw out from MFN. Mm -hmm. So like you revealed a lot here. Yes. On like what MFN is like your journey through MFN from F MFN nine to MFN fourteen. So like could you share on what you felt when you were in the ring during MFN fourteen? Yeah. And when you saw Tibetans out there, you know. Yeah. In thousands supporting you, waving the national flag, and mm. even you, like yeah. waving the national flag proudly after the fight, going yeah. around the stadium. Yeah, and uh, I would like to reveal one more thing. Ten season, uh, I'm in season nine. Uh, that time, uh, I gave my name and my age and everything in my state also. Mm -hmm. And that time, they, Alan sir, make mistake. Yeah, my manager make mistakes. I really don't know, but I did. I give everything to very correctly and very rightly, but still they write on me like uh, uh, when I uh, walk in the into the rain time, you know, and they announce like okay, and that time is uh, like everywhere it's like uh, I'm from Manipur and uh, she's a, uh, I think almost like uh, my age is also plus, and uh, they messed up many things, you know, they said like uh, okay. Um, She's uh, she's representing Manipur, which is not uh, not right. Mm. And uh, that time also I learned many things, you know. And that this season fourteen, I make sure they will not going to mistake this all those things again. When I <laughs> entered the ring and I saw my Tibetan people, I was like, okay, wow. And I feel like a very um, emotional, you know. And I feel like okay. My God, I just make one video for them. Mm -hmm. And I said, like, oh, come and support me. And they support me like, you know, infinity, you know, without any demands, you know. Mm -hmm. I just said, like, I have a huge platform and uh, which is I would like to share with you all guys, you know, and come and bring your uh, national flag, Tibetan and raise here, you know, and you guys have an opportunity and you can use, uh, how, you can use this opportunity mm -hmm. and recognize the opportunities. And I said, and that time I saw that in me, huge crowd. And I feel so proud myself because uh, this is my dream, you know, I want to represent Tibetan people in the international level. Which is in, in my athlete people, they don't know who's Tibetan. Yeah. Uh, even they don't know about Tibetan histories, you know, even they don't know about Tibetan national flags, you know, how they are so powerful, you know. And that time I feel so grateful and I feel very lucky and you know, God gave me finally chance to after ten years in my fighting career, you know, I got a finally like a, it's like a, my dream come true, you know. I feel very proud in that time because I did something for my people, you know. Mm -hmm. They came and they rise and a flag and all those things and I feel very lucky and even the Aisha ma'am, she's also very, very yeah. impressed. She said like, oh my God, Tanzan, you people are such a, I have no words. She, and she said uh, next time, she also hoping next time they will also come, we support you and all this. I said, I said, Yes, ma'am, of course, they were going to support. This is just begun, you know. Yeah. This is just the beginning, as yeah. you rightly said. And with just a small video, if you're able to bring such a number, like if it was like a, a concentrated effort, to put it in that way, I think it would be thousands of Tibetans. Yes. Maybe all over India, if it happens somewhere in Delhi, they would definitely come and support you. And through the platform of MFN, I think the Tibetan national flag and the Tibetan people were really lifted and brought to the limelight during this occasion. That is what I personally felt like. Yes. I was there and I had some of my friends. They were really emotional and you know, when you came to the ring, you were like, pay ma, pay ma. <laughs> so all of this, you know, it sends, it brings the sense of unity among Tibetans further, you know, like at the end of the day. And that is what I felt happened when you stood in that ring, the cage, the octagon or whatever you want to call it. Yes. So that really happened. Mm. So. On that note, Nimala, like, uh, it has not only been you, like a Tibetan yes. woman in India, representing Himachal Pradesh, but we also have Rinchen Griffith, 
in yes. the United Kingdom who's fighting, who's doing similar combat sports. We have Pema Doji, Tibetan Eagle, whatnot. We have a lot of Tibetans now starting their journey in combat sports. Do you think their exploits and even your engagement here inspires other Tibetans to take up this sport? And what message do you have for them? Yes, yes. Uh, Rinchen uh -huh. uh, and uh, that one, not yeah. kickboxer, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah and I, I, I respect him yeah. here. It's like uh, one, uh, he's from uh, one is France, right? He's, United uh, Kingdom, UK. Yeah, I think one is uh, who's playing for kickboxing. He have uh, like a tattoo, yeah, a yeah, huge yeah, yeah. tattoo. He's, he's yeah, in he's France, raised in. Uh, yeah, he raised also Tibetan yeah. flag, which yeah. is I also really inspired with mm. them. You know, I was like, oh wow, that's really great. He's so lucky, you mm. know. Because I'm representing India from last 10 years, right, for world level. And I couldn't get a chance to represent all those things because I have to be, if I want to step that, you know, I have to be like, you know, my career will be like a yeah. defect and all this. And, but still, I don't want to think all this in my career. You have an opportunity, you know, mm. and you can use that, you know. Okay, that's fine. You can use that and you can raise the then flag in there. If you die, that doesn't matter. Mm. You will be not feel guilty, you know. I was guilty. I was guilty from last 10 years mm. because I couldn't represent my Tibetan people. And I realized, you know, I realized I have to do something for those things, mm. you know. And this time, when unfortunately, God gives such a very, like, a, you know, I have no words for this opportunity. It's like a 10 March. Mm -hmm. 9 March, you know, yep. 9 March is my fight, you know, and I suddenly realized, okay, 9 March, 10 March is like a Tibetan people as uprising days, day right? So it's just a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. Before 10 March, I, and uh, if I call them during the stretch, yep. the people will recognize, you mm -hmm. know, oh, this is Tibetan, mm -hmm. or Tibetan flag is like that. So much aura, you know, when I came in the cage and I saw there's my God, everywhere is my Tibetan flag and so awful. And I call all my Tibetan people and come in here and support me. And they are support me, and especially Tibetan welfare officer. I just forgot his name because of my fight and all those things. And they call me and they said, like, attention, many people are coming in the office. And they said, like, do you Tibetan uh, uh, like uh, people uh, should be do something for her mm -hmm. and she's doing very uh, she's going to sacrificing her career yep. right you have to be do something and he said that many people that came from all came came in the office and they said like you should be do something for her mm -hmm. and suddenly in sudden time and he action quickly action yep. and uh, he called me and he said like okay Tanzan uh, I, I saw the video and many people and public is coming in office and they said like we have to be go and support you say something for them you know if she need help or not and he called me and I said like yeah of course I was thinking I called my one friend uh, I want like a Kamba Chuba mm -hmm. to face off but end of time he just dumb he didn't respond to me you know and I said okay fine that's okay mm -hmm. that's a God challenge right yep. and after that he called me, officer, the welfare officer, he called me and he said, like, if you need anything. Mm. And I said, oh, wow, that's really great. Yeah. And I said, maybe God is calling calling for me, mm. helping. Yeah. And I said, like, I need uh, Kamba Chuba yeah. for my face off. Mm. And he suddenly quickly arranged everything, you know, and arranged and he uh, came in the hotel. Yeah. And the, uh, with the many officers and they helped me to wear and we win for a face-off and uh, I feel so great, you know, because that time I represent my culture mm -hmm. also, cultural traditional dresses and Aisha Mem and Kishu Mem is so impressed and mm -hmm. I said, wow, so beautiful dress. I said, this is my culture dress and I represent that culture. I, re I represent my Tibet and also, and I like to thank you, uh, the Ishika today. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, if she not bring the uh, our uh, national Indian flag, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I, I'm not able to raise my flag, mm, yeah. which is really true. Yeah. She bring that uh, our national Indian flag. And it's like, I thought like, okay, God is calling me. Bring your flag also, right? Mm. You can also show them. Yeah. And then I got like a goods, you know, like, okay. Now I can also raise my flag, you know? Mm. And then I suddenly call like, I want the flag. And I just raise and I just walk through. It was like, uh, still I have a goosebump and I feel thank you to my God. 
He helped me a lot, and thanks to MF and Aisha ma'am. Indeed, uh, Imala, and you raise a very pertinent point when we are talking about those Tibetans representing China in these big companies here. So moving on this very note, like what has been the highlights of your career, and what are the challenges that you continue to face? Uh, my highlight is like uh, this MF in fourteen. Uh, my Tibetan million, uh, like our Tibetan people, they came like a thousand or thousand people at the supporting me. This is my, in my ten years fighting career, this is my biggest achievements. Mm. And uh, if I die that after that, I don't feel any guilt. This is my biggest achievements. And uh, <clears throat> up and down is a rule of life. You know, sometimes your happiness, sometimes it's unhappiness, but. I've been through many things, you know, financially issues and uh, mentally issues and training session issues and uh, many things. Uh, I, I don't want to reveal my personal life also. And uh, been through many things up and down when I was in doing in training. I, I didn't get any proper training sessions and all those things. When I've been for in Thailand, I sell my jewelries and everything I learned from there. And uh, suddenly I came back in India and my fight is not there. And, that is very downfall for me. And then after that, I joined uh, the gym, CrossGen, and CrossGen Fight Club. And um, that time, uh, I said to uh, Coach uh, Siddharth Singh, mm -hmm. I said, uh, I have a MFN season, maybe season 13 fight, and I want to train in here. And he said, like, OK, fine, you can train in here, confirm. I said, after that, my fight is not confirmed. And mm -hmm. then later, I, that time, I almost, I'm like almost bankrupt, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't have to pay anything, you know. And after that, I said, like, I need to be prepared. I, I spoke with Aisha, ma'am, uh, to, can you please spoke with Aisha, ma'am, mm -hmm. uh, as a, my coach? And can you please ask her, uh, can I get fight or not? First, I been through rules and the regulations, but maybe some reason, maybe he's very busy because I don't know. One day, I don't know what happened. What's wrong with him? Like he came, and he said, "You are not doing training and all these things, and you, how you can, can going to fight and how you going to win and all these things. Uh, better to not represent in question, <laughs> and otherwise, uh, question names going to down. You know, I feel very bad. You know, in that time, how can some coaches can say like that things? You know." Because my fight is only uh, left one week, mm -hmm. so it's mentally it's very depressing. Yeah. And I'm I'm very lucky, and uh, some other coaches in Cross Ten, they helped me a lot, and especially Sidan Sahu. Mm -hmm. He's uh, my biggest uh, supporter from my this whole my this um, MFN journey. Without him, I couldn't feel this to a step, and I can not able to call my people, you know. He always give me to um, say like, oh, you can do it, you can mm -hmm. do it, do it, you know. And um, coaches, he have a very busy schedule and he maybe he couldn't see me like uh, doing in training and hard work. And the training time, you know, I got a, a injury. Mm -hmm. uh, I got, uh, we don't have uh, too much girls in them there. <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. we always training with the boys yeah. and uh, Training time and unfortunately the boys hit me like a knee is like a very force and I got damage here and I got like a little liver damage, you know, mm -hmm. like a very minor liver damage and I've been through many things in the uh, physiotherapies and all this and this is very stressful for me and like a, I feel like a, some, uh, one time I feel like, like oh, I can't play. Mm -hmm. This isn't 14, I'm not able to play, you know. And then I realized, you know, my people will coming and all this coming and all these things. I have a very huge opportunity, mm -hmm. which is I don't want to miss them, you know. And I decided I will play. Mm -hmm. My coach still said, like, you will not win. Mm -hmm. Okay, somehow he's right mm -hmm. because he's a head coach. He have a good experience. and But actually, he don't know about what I'm thinking mm -hmm. and uh, what I'm going to planning and all this. And so this fight was not for me, you know. Mm -hmm. I was not playing for money. I was not playing for my name and mm -hmm. fame. And I was just playing for, I want to be just, I want to use that platform for my people, you know, yeah. 9 March. I saw that date, 9 mm -hmm. March, then I said, I want to play. Mm -hmm. 
and I've been in the physio and physio gave me a so good therapies and then I recover and all those things and then life is like up and down going bad this is a sports life you know sports person's life sports person life like a be very patient and you know tolerance and everything mm-hmm. that's why we call a sports person yeah. yep. and on that note like coming across all these challenges like uh, I can see like you have someone like a figure when uh, I believe when all your chips are down you need that figure and for you you are very lucky to have Siddharth with you and I on behalf of all Tibetans would take this opportunity yeah, to Siddhant. Hey, Siddhant thank Siddharth yeah. thank Siddharth thank Siddharth Sahu yeah. for this matter and on that note like we Tibetans in exile in the diaspora mm. we have a Tibetan government in exile they also have the Tibetan National Sports Association mm. so what do you think this body can do to support not only you but many other Tibetans who want to pursue such sports not only MMA but different sports to sort of bring the Tibetan identity to the fore because I think that is one avenue which has not been tapped till now we sort of uh, engage ourselves more firmly on the political activities but there are other avenues through which we can send strong political messages like which you rightly did hmm. so what do you think can such bodies do yes of course then uh, tibetan uh, cta right cta can help many people uh, i can see many young tibetan kids and uh, many uh, Tibetan uh, para-SF commandos, people mm. are very good in sports. They play in the, inside the army camp, you know, they play in the boxing competitions. Yeah. And, but they don't have a chance to play to national, international, mm. right? I think CTA can help them also. Uh, in the para-SF uh, these days, the para-SF, you know, they're also learning MMA. Mm. They have also MMA training session okay. in the Parasif inside the India Chagarta mm-hmm. in Dehradun. Mm-hmm. I think CTA can help mm-hmm. them also to come out and play. But in end of the time, medal will come in India. Yep. Right. Yep. It goes to India. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter where you're from, where you mm-hmm. come from, you know, medal will come in India. And I think CTA can help and the city and Desung can help like uh, this very warriors you know the army warriors you know they want to play because i have uh, many messages from them they are uh, as a para sf and they want to mma player and but they are not giving me permission and all these things i think they can help to them first mm. if they can help first and they will come and play with mma international nationally and then after that little uh, kids will be got good opportunity they will give City can make uh, one like an uh, academy also, you know, mm-hmm. for young Tibetan Because they've been making academy when it comes to football. That's what I've been seeing. But yeah. why can't they do things on other sports as well? Yes. To write yes. Uh, if I got a chance to meet uh, Prime Minister, yeah, City Prime Minister. Sikyong Pemba Siringla. Sikyong Pemba Siringla, right. I want to just want to say like, I want to open academy mm-hmm. for myself. To under to CTA, yep. under to CTA, I want to open my academy, uh, which is I will be run and I will be teach and I will be asked many another uh, coaches from other the country. They will come and they will teach uh, for our childrens, right? Our kids upcoming the prides, you know. Mm-hmm. And then after that, uh, when they are ready, they can represent Tibet. Yeah. A clear cut idea that you have laid, which I believe the CTA and other invested bodies in our Tibetan community can definitely work upon. Yeah, of course, because uh, we Tibetan are very lucky, you know, because of His Holiness of Dalai Lama, right? We don't have, uh, like, uh, mm, some people, they have nothing, you know, they don't have a food, they don't have to eat proper your know, fashion signs and all those things, but we are lucky by His Holiness. And, uh, you know, we have uh, many rich people in Tibetan, right? Mm-hmm. They're living in Canada, US, many associations as there, and uh, plus uh, CTA. Mm-hmm. They can, you know, help. If they can help me first mm-hmm. to open academy, which is I can run under to CTA. Yeah. So we can help to many people, mm-hmm. many people and many kids, which is I have a uh, many DM in my Instagram. They want to fight, they want to training. If they don't have a training session, if they have a, they don't have a training camp and training, 
want uh, like academy and then how we come we will come bill yeah. and represent in tibet right because um, to be very honestly my tibetan kids are you know they are not uh, familiar you know mm. with uh, the new like uh, they have very comfort zones mm. right and they don't want to be moved on to yeah. comfort zone because they are very comfort with tibetan to tibetan yep. people right they are not comfortable with another like our uh, like our country people yeah. and other people and they're not comfortable because the bone and uh, the bone and uh, like a growth of like these things yeah. you know we're only in the tibetan society mm. and all these things you know i think uh, if they can give me a chance to open the academy mm. under the cta you know i can make difference i can make more tibetan kids to in the mma not in only mma and boxing and judo and karate and wrestling bjj you know mm. they can come and they can choose the game you know mm. what they like it like a table tennis football and uh, mma if they want to uh, learn for mma mm. if they want to uh, learn for bjj and all this things we can teach them then in our academy yeah. under the cta yeah. which is i can i will run mm. so if they can give me like this things a thought they so it's going to be huge different and now i think this is the time mm-hmm. every tibetan to invest these things for future mm-hmm. this is not my benefits yeah. this is all about my hard work you know i cry night i cry day you know people don't know sometimes i eat only maggi you know for going for training you know mm-hmm. sometimes i don't have money to pay my uh, room rent and training fees even not proper diet and all this i've been through many things this is i'm here today you know this is all about my like you know sweat blood you know the hard work my emotions everything you know so i'm here and after 10 years and i'm just requesting to cta and rich people they have to be invest these things for not for me this is for our future dependents yeah and on this note like amla uh, i believe there is a we can position right now if you are aware for the tibetan national sports association i think you are a very valid candidate who can apply for that ah uh, no i don't want to go for like a candidate and all this since i just want to open one academy which is in the city and I mean, but if you are head of that organization you can do whatever you want <laughs> in the when when we can go for head of this organization and this things as a politics will come you know and i i don't want to be into to politics mm. I don't want to be like an okay I like this one and some people will like a dis- dislike it you know yeah. I don't like this I don't I don't want politics okay. and I don't want like a seated in the here you know I don't want to sit okay. I want to walk for my young Tibetan people and I want to be walk for like you know this uh para SF mm-hmm. commandos which is he, he they want to be play Yep. they really want to play mma and if they can come in mma i'm give you 100% everything is possible possible indeed my very own father was part of it and my own uh, attachment to firstly it was boxing you know like yeah. tibetans in that they really appreciate boxing and of late my father has been into ufc and mma and i've been forced to watch but i'm also starting to gradually like the sports and on that note like uh, mma as a general i mean you're much more aware than what i see you see like women are not at the forefront and it's not only mma like you see other sports and other fields also so what do you think mfn which is led by ayusha ma'am a woman yeah and her daughter as well so what do you think like women are making such great changes in these sports and other avenues and even yourself being a woman <laughs> what do you think it will lead do you think these sort of things would lead more women taking part in such sport actually uh, we have a uh, many women who want to play who want to come like a uh, same like a uh, we got opportunity uh, i think uh, they they are like a um, little bit like a uh, cultural difference and um, also um, they they have no right to go out from home you know some people are like a narrow minded mm-hmm. like a since really last generation type you know and still uh, we have in sports there were many girls but uh, mfn 14 is uh, like uh, when i play there is only one fight one fight. one fight girl right 
and uh, we are very lucky you know we have uh, like Aisha ma'am and Kishu ma'am you know which is a very strong lady you know which is who is uh, doing all this and I can call them you know there's a, a fighter mother Teresa's both you know my fighter mother, mother Teresa who can give us the chance to play and we can uh, like a uh, uh, fill film like our dreams and in not only MMA, MFN, there's a many girls in the fight. There's a many uh, small, small organization. They uh, organize and all this and they also come in girls and fight. But this is MFN is like a very professional fight, you know. They're very selected candidate only can play in there, not everyone, you know. So slowly, slowly, MFN also, they're coming more girls. So they last, last three, three, yeah, two months, two or three months before they signed three, two girls, MFN. Maybe next season you can see more girls in there. And um, and I I want to also say like uh, girls, I think sometime, you know, girls have a very good opportunity, you know, but uh, sometimes the girls are, they are not, uh, choosing their rights, mm -hmm. they just want to like oh, you know relax. And some girls they really want to fight, they really want to achieve something in their life, you know. But some girls they don't want to achieve anything. They just want to make some funny videos, mm -hmm. and they make themselves funny, and uh, they make them their self respect like a dumb, you know. And people will judging, you know, and oh, same girls are saying like these things. I think uh, girls uh, should be like a first thing first. Uh, they need to be understand what is the self respect, yep. and uh, second thing is uh, you have to be uh, one vision where you want to go. Mm -hmm. If you go there, you want to help for other people. You want to help for our current country. You want to help for other uh, women, men. You have to be very clear vision, you know. Mm. One, some of girls, you know, they don't have a vision. They are just playing for MMA, just fun, mm. because they love sports. Mm. I think as a girls and boys are same. As a sports person, I look everyone is same. Mm. And uh, if I if they getting uh, any opportunity to boys, the girls also getting opportunity, which is MFN giving us yeah. right. So just only need to do, uh, you have to be, uh, go and apply. Yep. I want to fight. First, you have to be fight for yourself, you yep. know. If you're not fighting for yourself, you know, how you can going to become a, like a, a helping for another people? Mm -hmm. So it's a very, girls are, you know, not uh, so much familiar to write. Uh, I think some, like, uh, they don't understand what is right and what is mm -hmm. wrong, you know. They're confused. If they got an opportunity, if you got, they, they got some girls, they have an opportunity. Mm. Opportunity, you know, they're playing uh, very well and all these things. But they never look back to other people. I think uh, if the girls, you know, look their back on a fellow uh, trainers and a training people, training persons, you know, which is the one, they want to also, they have a mm. dream to play MFN, yeah, and not MFN only, many things. If you are here up, and if you are in here up, and you can help for them, and they will also come, right? Yep. If you are not helping for them, if you are not giving to chance to play this fellow one, mm. you know, then girls will not come. Yep. And yeah. On that note, I believe even Ishika, man, like she is yeah. a real inspiration. Like being age yeah. of thirty-five after the fight, like the respect that you showed yeah. was really inspirational for me yeah. to watch. I respect her as a sports person. You really raise a pertinent point of yes. how that is a path that yes. for women to come up mm -hmm. to the fore, be it in any other sports, but you need someone who really leads them and mm -hmm. not only leads them, but uplifts the others who also others, want yeah. to engage in these sort of activities. So Pamela, on that note, we are running short on time. Sure. So finally, I would like to ask you whether you have any messages to our fellow Tibetans worldwide, firstly, and second, the plethora of Tibetan supporters who continue to support and stand in solidarity with us Tibetans. Mm. I like to give message to my Tibetan, not only girls, the boys, the father and mother and everyone, you know, just help 
to your kids, you know, to grow up, you know, don't like a, like a, don't go there, don't go there, okay, what people will going to say, don't do it, these things, people will like, okay, what they are doing, like, you know, like in Tibetan words, Mosala. Yeah. It's not like that, you know, you have to be make your kids independent, you know, then they will walk. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, parents should be help to people, uh, kids to go academy, go training, not only football. Mm -hmm. We Tibetans are like only football, football, <laughs> football, 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 same like uh, our India people, you know, mm -hmm. get, 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 get stuck in your one game. Yep. There's a many games, mm -hmm. which is you can make your career. You know, and you can uh, represent your country. And I just want to say to parents also, just help them throw their, the, like a martial art, MMA, BJJ, everywhere. These days are many academies are there, but choose wisely. Mm -hmm. Not every, every academy is good. And help them and uh, young girls, especially young girls, I want to say, just Come, if you don't like sports, doesn't matter. If you are doing some other work, if you have some other ambitions, go and fill form. But you have to be one vision. If you, uh, if you will be like, a, okay, I want to go this, I want to go for nursing, I want to go for air hostess, I want to go for footballer, MMA and all those things. Just make one vision. After that, if you reach there, what do you want to do? This vision is very important and make that vision and everything is possible. And especially boys, I want to just say that if you like the MMA, if you want to play MMA, come and train. This is not like a kid's game, you know, one month, two months, not like that. Because I honestly, I want to say like my Tibetan girls and boys are very temporary, you know. <laughs> temporary. I go, oh, nice, nice, nice. And some days like, okay, I don't want to go there and all these things like that. Uh, go <laughs> train yourself, whatever you like it, you know, and do and, you know, make vision after vision, you reach there and what you want to do exactly, uh, your benefits you want to give uh, yourself, your yeah, other. That's uh, make things. And uh, thank you for my Tibetan supporters, uh, especially in season, uh, MF in season 14. The thousand of thousand Tibetan people they came and I feel very like I, I'm still like a uh, feeling um, emotional which is they give me a response only and only one my video words they help me a lot and thank you so much and I always uh, said you will be continuously help, uh, going to support me and uh, I like to thank you TNSA uh, and at first of my career, TNSA also helped me to some financially. First, one year two, my training camp and all those things, they helped me for financially. Which is, I want to say thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, one more, I want to say like a children fund association, something like that. Tibetan yeah. Children Fund Association. They helped me for last time, you know, and uh, helped me to sponsor the, like uh, my training camp and all those things. I want to say thank you. And um, thank you everyone. And uh, I hope you will be help me a lot uh, to rise more my Tibetan kids are here. And I want to be, uh, I want to just give last uh, message to uh, Prime Minister Pemba uh, Serinla. Please help us to make one academy, which is I will I will love to run and under the CTA, so we can make more Tibetan uh, warriors for our Tibet. So with that note, Pemba, you really shed very much like unknown thing that we are not aware of, like all the things that is involved in MMA. Not only MMA, like what a woman goes through, a Tibetan woman born in India, what she goes through. So taking time off from your busy schedule, you're off to Kashmir yeah. tomorrow. So thank you so much. And all of us Tibetans here, we look forward to your next fight. Yeah. And we'll come in the thousands to support you. Of course, sure. Thank you so much for inviting me. And thank you so much, my all my Tibetan friends and my family and all my uh, Indian fans and uh, all my coaches are thank you so much for helping me and believing me. Jai Shri Ram, Jai Ram and Pegalo Testile. 
थैंक यू सो मच मोर अपडेट एंड वीडियोस बाय एफएनए क्लिक ऑन द लिंक एंड प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू आवर चैनल थैंक यू फॉर वाचिंग